Stand by for West. A crime file based on John Creasy's novel, Inspector West at Bay. Dramatized for radio by Maurice Travers. Inspector West at Bay, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard, and Sarah Lawson as his wife, Janet. Part one, Flashpoint in Fleet Street. Hello? Yes, this is Ben Marino. Who is that? Oh, I didn't recognize your voice. We seem to have a bad line. What? Yes, of course I'm working on it. I think I know just the boy for the job. In fact, I'm planning to look him up tonight. Now, don't worry. Leave it to me. Evening, Jack. Oh, uh, good evening, Mr. Marino. Nancy, they're waiting down the end of the bar. They're starting to find a visitor. Well, then they'll have to wait then, won't they? Because I've got my hands full. They're keeping you busy, Jack, huh? Oh, mustn't grumble. Uh, will it be, Mr. Marino? Scotch. Make it a double, will you? Certainly. By the way, uh, has Bertie Downs been in tonight? Bertie Downs? Ah. Well, I thought I saw him. Uh, yeah, that's right, over there in the far corner. On his own as usual, oh. looking twice as miserable. Maybe I can cheer him up. I'll see you again, Jack. Well, hello there, Bertie boy. Hey. Oh, it's you, Mr. Marino. Oh, the name's Ben to my friends, Bertie. I've always thought of you as a friend. You have? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, sure, Ben. How's it all going then, Bertie? I oh, don't ask, because I might tell you. Oh, like that, is it? Yeah, like that. The world's not treating you too generously these days, eh? Well, since when is it ever, eh? Oh, sorry to hear it. Well, I'm a mock man, aren't I? I mean, it's the same old story. Once a bloke's had his collar felt, got a bit of form, and the lousy coppers never leave you alone. Tell me something. Yeah? Have you still got that motor scooter of yours? Yeah, well, of course I have. What do you want to know for? I've got a little proposition. There's half a ton in it for you. You're interested? Are you kidding? Fifty quid? You bet I'm interested. Fine, fine. Well, what's it all about, then, eh? And not here, Bertie boy. Too many people means too many ears. I can tell you this, though. It's right up your alley. Just the sort of job you like. It is, eh? And easy. Dead easy. Yeah? Like falling off a log. <laughs> you ever tried falling off a log? I mean, on purpose? Well, uh, let's put it another way. Let's say it's as simple as pressing the trigger on a water pistol. <laughs> yes, that's putting it rather well, even if I do say so myself. Roger? Roger, where are you? No, uh, here, John, the kitchen. Oh, 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 you're not still sitting in here. Oh, for goodness sake. And will you please get your nose out of that paper? Hmm? What's that, Jan? Oh, do listen. Well, what's the matter? The boys, Roger. Well, what about them? Well, they're out in the car waiting for you. Are they? Well, I'll just finish my tea. Oh, you, you haven't got time. Martin and Richard will be late for school. Uh, oh, look, if you didn't mean to drive them this morning, why in heaven's name didn't you say so half an hour ago? Now, easy, Jan. Take it easy. Well, a bit snappy in the tongue this morning, aren't we? What's wrong? Get out of the bed the wrong side? What? Well, aren't you going to tell me? Uh... There's the phone. Never mind that. I want to know what's got into you this morning. Look, are you going to answer it, or do I have to? All right. All right, so I'll get it. Chelsea, 1492. Morning, Roger. Who's that? Oh, Bill Sloan here. What's the matter? Too early in the day for you? Oh, sorry, Bill. I, I was a bit preoccupied. Uh, where are you calling from, Hampshire? No, I'm home. Got back last night. Late last night. How'd you make out? Any luck? All we could ask for. The Hampshire boys have got Ralph Bailey. He's tucked up nice and tight in one of their best cells. Oh, good work. So you can chalk up another one, huh, Detective Inspector? Calm off it, Roger. We both know where the credit belongs. And anyway, you're the wrong shape to play Modesty Blaze. <laughs> well, thanks for phoning with the news, Bill. I'll see you at the yard, okay? Okay. Bye, Roger. Bye. Um, what the... <laughs> Oh, it's hot. <laughs> hey, you two, Scoopy Fish, leave that car horn alone. I'll be there in a minute. Oh, Roger, haven't you gone yet? In a minute. You know what? 
Looks like we're going to get one of those real old-fashioned summer days today. When I put my head out the door just now, the sun was really oh, for hot. For goodness sake, you're not going to stand here chatting about the weather. You've got to get a move on, or Martin and Richard will be late. Then they can be late. There's something more important. Oh, Roger. Now, come on, Jan, I... love. What's it all about, hmm? Oh, wait. Oh, it's, it's, it's nothing, really. Well, that was quite a display of temperament for nothing, really. <laughs> well, I... Oh, oh, I don't know. Ever since I got up this morning, I've had this weird sort of feeling as if... as if I'm just waiting for something to happen. Something bad. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Oh, Roger, the boys! Yes, I'd better get going. Won't do my copper's reputation any good if I'm booked for speeding. <laughs> mm. Bye, love. Bye. I'll try and give you a ring later if I get a chance. Mr. Marino? Yes. That you, Bertie? Yeah, that's right. I was just uh, checking with you, like what you said. Where are you speaking from? N not your place? No, no, no. I'm in a phone box, like you told me. Ah, oh, good lad. Well, everything all set? Yeah, sure. How about this scooter? Nothing likely to go wrong with it at the last minute, is there? No, nah, not a chance. I've had it checked over. She's running sweet as a nut. I've got her parked outside this box right now. Fine. And you've got the doings? Yeah. Got it right here in my pocket. Okay. Well... It's all yours, Bertie boy. Do a good job, and there might be a little bonus for you. Oh, oh. well, that'd be nice. <laughs> Bye there, Mr. Marino. Fifty quid and a bonus. <laughs> Lovely. And I'd have been ready to do it for free. And enjoy it. Come in. Oh, Bill. Here you are, Roger. My report on the Bailey case. Oh, thanks. Uh, take a chair. Uh, no, not that one. It's a bit shaky. Plant your great mass of blubber on that. You'd put pay to it for good and all. Blubber? I'll have you know all this is pure muscle. You ask my missus. Oh, boasting again, huh? Hmm. Well, nothing wrong with this report. Clear, concise, right on the button. So that wraps up Mr. Bailey, all shipshape and Bristol fashion. Yeah, except for one small matter. What's that? The question of our young friend in Fleet Street. What's to be done about him? Oh, don't get me started on that. I know what I'd like to do with him. Newspaper men. They're sent to try us, and they do. They're always on a copper's back like fleas on a dog. Well, most newsmen cooperate with us pretty well, I found. Well, this one didn't, did he? You know, Roger, we could have him for withholding evidence. No, we could, but my guess is we won't. Why not? Teach a young cub a lesson. I sent up a note about it, but somehow I don't think the assistant commissioner will see it that way. Why shouldn't he? Don't tell me old chat is going soft. Well, you know better than that. Sir Guy Chat was one of the best ACs we've ever had. Uh, Chief Inspector West. Uh, Chatsworth here. Oh, good morning, sir. About your note uh, concerning that young reporter on the evening glow. Oh, yes, sir. I've uh, thought it over and made a decision. We will not take any official action on the matter. I rather thought that's what you'd decide, sir. Oh, did you? On what grounds, may I ask? Well, uh, more than anything in the interests of public relations, I thought. Mm. Well, you're perfectly right, as it happens. At the present moment, uh, what with these Sunday demonstrations and student sit-ins and all the rest of it, I think it would be untimely. Mm. We don't want to give the press any chance to complain about unwarranted harshness on the part of the police. You follow me? Oh, yes, of course, the guy. However, uh, that doesn't mean the cocky young blighter is to get off scot-free. I want you to go down to Fleet Street, Roger. And have a word with his editor. Is that the idea, sir? That is not the idea, no. Oh, sorry, sir. I want you to see the young gentleman in person. I want him torn off a strip. Read him the riot act. I don't care how hot and strong you pitch it to him. And you can tell him from me that he's damn lucky not to find himself up in front of a magistrate. Yes, sir. And that if ever he tries playing ducks and drakes with the police again... I, uh, uh get the general drift, sir. <clears throat> yes, yes, quite. I also suggest you uh, take another officer along with you. It should add a little extra weight. Well, how about Detective Inspector Sloan? Uh, 
When it comes to extra weight, I can't think of anyone better. <laughs> More senses than one, eh? Yes, fine, Roger. Sloan's done a good job on this case. Tell him I said so, will you? Yes. Yeah. That's all for the moment. All right, sir. Goodbye. Okay, Bill, on your feet. Not so fast. Hmm? Just what was the idea of that crack? Oh, what crack? To chatty on the phone just now about my weight. Oh, a bit on a touchy side today, aren't we? Come on, we've got an assignment in Fleet Street. That should make you happy. Well, here we are, ground floor. <laughs> and what's amusing you, may I ask? You may, and I'll tell you. The look on that reporter's boat race by the time you've finished with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I've spent a happier half hour. You know how I feel about newspaper men. But I was almost sorry for that young geezer. Mm. Now watch out for these plate glass doors, Roger. Yep. Oh, it's hot. Mm. Well over the 80 mark, I'd say. A real scorcher. I don't know about you, but I could use a pint. What do you say? I say lead on, McSloan. The sweat's pouring off me in rivers. Now, of course, for a mopping up operation, hold it a tick, Bill, while I take out a handkerchief. Chelsea, 1492. Mrs. West? Uh, Janet, uh, that you? Yes, Who, who's, who's that? Uh, Chatworth speaking. Who's the... What's happened? What's happened to Roger? What the dickens? Now, how could you know that? Oh, Sir Kai, it's not a habit of yours to make social calls in the middle of the afternoon. Huh, I see. Uh, now, uh, don't get worried, my dear. I'm not telephoning to tell you that he's a death door or anything of that sort. He's uh, had an accident. An accident? His hand. His right hand. It's been burnt. Oh. He's in the hospital at the moment. Sir Delfritz. He won't be coming home to Bell Street tonight. Uh, they're going to keep him in for observation. You mean it's bad? Oh, nothing to get too alarmed about. He's had some pain, of course, but the medical chaps have attended to that. You can go and see him this evening, my dear. Uh, I've fixed all that. Oh, thank you, Sir Guy, but... You haven't told me what actually happened. Uh, well, uh, some uh, lunatic, and it's mm. the only word for it, uh, threw vitriol. Vitriol? You mean acid? Uh, yes. Uh, oh. A girl caught it, too. It was aimed at her almost certainly. Oh, poor... Oh, that's horrible. Yes. It seems uh, Roger was in the way. Uh, luckily, he was mopping his face with his handkerchief at the time. Otherwise, oh, of don't, course... don't. Hmm. Yes, <laughs> quite. I can give you one small uh, consolation, Janet... After he gets out, uh, there'll be a, a few days sick leave for Roger. A, a few days? A few weeks would be more like it, the way he works. And you know it, Sir Guy. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with you, in spite of the shock, and that's clear enough. Well, I'll say goodbye, my dear. Don't forget, St. Alfred's, any time after six. I'll be there on the dot. Goodbye, and thank you, Sir Guy. Come in. Ah, oh, Sloan. Yes, sir. Well, come in, come in. I was um, on the phone to Mrs. West a few minutes ago. How did she take it, sir? <laughs> Need you ask? Uh, Roger West is a very fortunate man with a wife like that. Now oh, then, Detective Inspector, what have you got on this affair? Well, not much, I'm afraid, sir. What about the girl? The one the attack was really meant for? We're waiting on a full report from the doctors, but from what I can gather, it's not going to be as bad as we first thought. Thank the Lord for that. Only a couple of splashes. And the medicos say they should be able to do something about any possible scars. If there's one breed of villain above all others that I detest, it's these acid throwers. In my book, it's the worst crime of the lot. Mean, nasty, vicious... All and... of that and more, sir. You've got hold of the eyewitnesses to the attack? As many as we could. Anything in their statements to help? Well, not really, sir. The longer I'm a copper, the more I realize how few people really notice what's right under their noses. That would seem to apply equally to you, Detective Inspector. I beg your pardon, sir. Well, damn it, man. You were right on the spot. Right beside West when it happened. Well, yes, sir. But, well, Fleet Street in the middle of the day. People were milling all round us on the pavement. I'm perfectly aware of that. I'm also aware that you're supposed to be a trained police officer. Trained to observe, to note, to identify. Or am I mistaken? Well, I, uh, 
I, I just didn't see a thing, sir. Hmm. Well, maybe Chief Inspector West. Maybe he spotted something. Then you'd better ask him, hadn't you? You won't be able to do it till this evening, however. In the meantime, I suggest you dig out any information on acid throwers. Descriptions, photographs, everything. Yes, sir. I'll get on to it immediately. Soon. Yes, sir? I want this nasty little swine behind bars and in record time. Is that clear? Find out who he is, where he is, and bring him in. Mr. Marino? Is this the sort of place where you spend most of your time? Yeah, I suppose so. Hey, beast me what you see in it. Fiddling around with a lot of tin tables and fruit machines. Well, where does it get you? Well, I like it. Well, uh, here's something you ought to like even more. Half a ton, I promised. <laughs> There's an extra fiver in that little lot. I told you there might be a bonus. Oh, well, sure. Thanks very much. And you'll find a little something more in this carrier bag. Oh. Hey, a bottle. A bottle of Scotch Bertie Boy, the best, just for you. Well, thanks, Ben, thanks very much. Here, yeah, how about you coming back to my place and we'll crack this right now, eh? Oh, I lied to Bertie, but no can do. I've got an appointment. Anyway, it's supposed to be all for you, personally. So, have yourself a bone. Now, I have to love you and leave you, Bertie Boy. Huh. See you around. Yes, yeah, see ya. Roger? Hello, John, love. Oh, Roger. Oh, oh, darling. darling. Easy, love, easy now. Everything's okay. <laughs> uh, sorry about this. I, I hope you didn't get a scare. Oh, no. Oh, Chatworth was very good. He, he rang me well, and... The old man himself. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and why not? You're the best man he's got and he knows it. No, I wouldn't go so far as that. Well, I would. Oh, darling, mm. your hand. All those bandages, is it very painful? No, not now. Well, not so much, anyway. Oh. Damn nuisance more than anything. Uh, what about the boys? Have you told Scoopy and Fish? Well, not yet. I thought I'd do it in the morning. Yeah. I just said I was going in to meet you. Yeah, well, just as well, I think. Roger. Hmm? I'm sorry. Hmm? About this morning no. being stoppy with oh, you. Oh, forget it, Jan, love. Well, it's... It's strange, though. I mean, it gives me a funny sort of feeling... Waking up this morning, quite sure that something bad was going to happen. And now it has, hasn't it? Well, maybe you ought to take it up seriously. Never know. You, you might wind up on one of those women's magazines. <laughs> what the Stars Foretell by Janet West. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the strangest thing of all? What's that? I've still got the same feeling. As if, well, this isn't really all of it. There's more. Much more to come. Ah, oh, Shiana, we'll flipping catch. Shut up, open, will you? Shut up, get off, push off. Man can't have a few quiet drinks in peace in his own feeding room without flipping cats on the roof. Oh, here we go, then, birdie boy. Damn it. Ah, oh, it's lovely. <laughs> and it's another little drink. Another little drink, another little drink won't do us any old. <laughs> another little... Oh. oh, hey. Oh, it hurts. Oh, terrible. Help. Oh, help, somebody. Oh, God, please help somebody. <laughs> going in a minute or two, darling. Your doctor did say I shouldn't stay too long. No, a load of rubbish. You stay as long as you want. No. You've got to get a good night's sleep, he said. Can I come in? Oh, Mark Lessing. Mark! Uh, hello there. <laughs> oh, damn nice to see you, Mark, old chap. Come on in. When did you get back to London? Oh, my train pulled in half an hour ago. 
I bought an evening paper at the station bookstall, and what do I see? Chief Inspector West's latest little adventure staring me in the face. Well, you couldn't expect the Fleet Street boys to miss that, particularly when it happened right on their own doorstep. Well, it's a fine thing, I must say. I can't leave you alone for one day without you getting into trouble. Mm. How'd you find out where I was? I call the yard, of course. You know, I haven't helped you on a case or two without learning what to do in an emergency, mm. you know. Uh, how is the hand, Roger? It's not likely to be... No, 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 no. It'll be all right. Uh, well, that's a relief. And the way the papers play everything up these days. Uh, um, any clue to who was responsible for this charming little job? Well, Bill Sloan's working on it, I gather. Uh, tell me, um, how'd you get on at your auction sale thing? Oh, yes. Did you get what you were after? No, not a chance. Oh. I mean, half the top dealers in London were there. Mm. And with my rather modest resources, I couldn't have to match their bid. Oh, what a pity. That's bad luck. Well, after all, collecting is just my hobby. <laughs> and I have to remember that. Oh, dear. That'll be the doctor, I suppose, telling us it's time to go. Come in. Now, Bill. Is this a bad moment, Roger? No, 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 of course not. Uh, come right in. Good. Hello, Bill. Good evening, Janet. Well, you know Mark Blessing, of course. Sure. Glad to see you again. Good to see you. What's the latest, Bill? What do you mean, the latest? I've made about as much progress as a centipede with one leg. <laughs> Bill, what about that girl? I keep thinking of her. Do you know if she's going to be all right? Well, the doctors seem to think so. Oh, good, I'm glad. Have you had a chance to question her yet? I'm afraid not. They're keeping you under sedation on account of the shop more than anything, I understand. Oh, I see. And we've had damn little joy out of any of the other witnesses. The AC's on the warpath over it, I can tell you. Well, Chatwood's got the bit between his teeth, has he? With it? a vengeance, Mr. Lessing. Roger... Did you notice anything? Without some kind of lead, we're stymied. Oh, let me see. We were making for the pub. Now, coming towards us, it was, yes, uh, two middle-aged women. Looked like pretty average housewives. There's a chap in uh, bowler, black jacket, striped pants. And there was something else. I, I can't seem to place quite what it was. Uh, done a damn sight better than I could. Look, I've got a file here from the records. There's office. a lot of traffic in the street. There are cars, buses. Wait a minute. What is this? Yes. Yes, I'm almost certain. I'm certain of what? Oh, well, come on, let's hear a it. Scooter, motor scooter. That's right. Now, we were walking on the edge of the pavement door, weren't we? That's right. Now, facing the oncoming traffic. Now, when I stopped to mop my face, this motor scooter suddenly swerved over. Young chap. He had something in his hand. Look, looked like a pistol. A pistol? Could it have been a water pistol? Filled with vitriol. By God, that's it. I've got a list of names here and some photographs. Known vitriol merchants. All right, let's have it. Now, never mind the names. Let's go through the photographs first. No. No, not him. No. no. Wait. This one. Are you sure, Roger? That's him, the boy on the motor scooter. No question. Uh, who is he? Name, Bertram Downs. Known as Bertie. 24 years old. Went down when he was 18 for a four-stretch. He threw vitriol over a girlfriend who'd given him the toss for someone else. Oh, how could anyone do such a thing? Well, thanks a lot, Roger. I'm on my way. Uh, but, uh, you're off to pick him up. Sooner than fast. Well, uh, mind if I come along? I'd rather like a word with this Mr. Bertie Downs. Well, you'll have to take your turn. I'm first in the queue. <laughs> Oh, you don't mind, do you, Janet? I was going to take you home to Bell Street. No, but, uh... I can get a taxi, Mark. Don't worry. Now, Mark, um, I think you'd better not. Well, just for once, Roger, I'm not taking your advice. Come on, Bill. Let's get going. Sooner than fast, in your own inimitable phrase. Well, that's his door. Well, what are we waiting for? Downs, open up the police. Downs, open up there. Seems like no one's home. Well, let's see. Someone's home, all right. But that's why he didn't answer the door. Look. Good God. Bill. He's dead, isn't he? There's a door now. Well, what do you know about that? Quite a turn up. Yes, and he seems to have had a small party. Just himself, a glass, and a bottle of scotch. Well, don't touch the bottle. Why not? Well, I think it might have to go for analysis. I'm no expert, Mr. Lessing, but I've seen more than one case of poisoning in my time. Poisoning? That's right. Suicide? Well, not for my money. I just don't see a little squit like Bertie Downs getting all full of remorse and committing suicide. Then what do you think? Well, I may be jumping to conclusions, but I think someone dosed that bottle for him. We're going to have to find out who and why. Now, we're going to be pretty busy around here, Mr. Lessing, so... Oh, all right, all right, I can take a hint. I'll, uh, leave you to it. 
I'll pop round to Bell Street, I think. Keep Janet company for a while. Uh, see you later. That's funny. Who's, who's that? Janet. What's wrong? It's me, Mark. Oh, Mark, I'm so glad it's you. Well, what's the matter? You're as white as a sheet. What is it, the boys? Is there anything wrong? No, 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 they're all right. Well, what is it then? Oh, Mark. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, calm down. Now, try and tell me, nice and calmly. Well, when I got home, I found a letter inside the door. I I've got it here on the hall table, do you see? It's addressed to Chief Inspector Roger West. There's no stamp, no postmark. There's no signature, and it's just one sentence. Read it. This is only the beginning. <laughs> do you see? You see what it means? What? Oh, don't you understand? Isn't it obvious? The vitriol. That girl, it had nothing to do with her. She was the one who got it by accident, not Roger. It was meant for Roger, right from the start. <laughs> been listening to Patrick Allen and Sarah Lawson in the first part of Inspector West at Bay by John Creasy. Listen to Bombshell in Bournemouth, the next episode of John Brown's production of Inspector West at Bay. Inspector West. Stand by for West. A crime file based on John Creasy's novel, Inspector West at Bay, dramatized for radio by Maurice Travers. Inspector West at Bay, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard, and Sarah Lawson as his wife, Janet. Part two, Bombshell in Bournemouth. Now, hold on a minute, Janet. It's perfectly clear now. The vigil was never intended for that poor girl, and Roger didn't get his hand burned by accident just because he happened to get in the way. Janet. It was the other way around. The acid was meant for Roger the whole time. Well, you can't be certain of that. I mean, just because you get home from the hospital and find a letter... Well, yes, I can. No stamp, no postmark on the envelope, only Roger's name and address, and no signature inside, and just the words, this is only the beginning. Janet, it could be the work of a crank. No, it wasn't written by any crank, Mark. I know it wasn't, and you'll see I'm right. They've arrested the man who did this awful thing, haven't they? You went with Bill Sloan to pick him up. Uh, yes, Then but... you'll see. Once they start to question him... There'll be no questions, Janet. What? Why not? We found Bertie Downs all right, Sloan and I. But we found him dead. Dead? Say that again, Detective Inspector. He was dead when we got there, Sir Guy. <laughs> Incredible. Now, uh, let me get this clear. Roger West was able to identify this Bertie Downs from uh, uh, photographs in our records, correct? Correct, sir. You went to Downs' lodging house uh, to make the arrest, found him dead, poisoned, you say? Well, that's still got to be officially established, sir. The bottle of whiskey we found in his room has gone for analysis. I'm waiting for the report. I see. Uh, but there's no doubt that Downs was responsible for throwing the vitriol. Firing the vitriol, sir, Guy. Firing it? He used a water pistol loaded with the stuff. The pistol was in his jacket together with a sum of money, 55 nick... Uh, pounds, sir. Indeed. Interesting. Uh, I, uh, I understand, Detective Inspector, uh, that you took uh, Mark Lessing along with you. That's right, sir. Oh, I have nothing against him personally. Quite a decent fellow. And uh, I'll admit that what he writes, his books and articles on the subject of crime, criminals and so forth, it all sounds stuff on the whole and quite uh, worthwhile, in fact. But the point is that Lessing is an amateur. And as Assistant Commissioner for Crime at Scotland Yard... I do not approve of amateurs being involved with police investigations. I'm sure I make myself plain. You do, sir. Perfectly. Very well. You'll remember it in future, I trust. Chatsworth? Yes. Uh, yes, he is. 
Uh, one moment. It's for you. Thank you, sir. Sloan speaking. You have? Well, that's pretty best work. Right, let's have it. Mm-hmm. I see. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. That was the lab, sir. The report on the whiskey. Well? Poison, all right. There was enough arsenic in that bottle of Scots to polish off half a dozen men. Huh. Here, Janet. I'll drink this. Oh, no, 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 Mark. Now, I don't come need on. it. Polish it off. A mm. small Scotch won't hurt you. A wee dram to put the colour back in your cheeks, lassie. Oh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's mm. the ticket. Well, you're starting to look more like your old self already. <laughs> Well, perhaps it had helped to fill the nights with Rogers on duty. Those nights really do drag, you know, especially once Martin and Richard have gone to bed. Maybe I should indulge more often. <laughs> yeah, well, I may be wrong, but uh, somehow I don't think Roger would fancy the idea of coming home to find his wife half stone. <laughs> I'm jolly sure he wouldn't. <laughs> Janet, hmm? what have you told the boys about Roger? I wasn't going to say anything to them till the morning, but when I found that letter, well, they could see that something was upsetting me. Mm hmm so I just told them that Roger had had a slight accident. Oh, Mark. Here. What is it, Janet? What's up? Oh, I'm frightened. I'd never let Roger see it. I wouldn't want to worry him. But this whole thing, the vitriol, the letter... I'm scared. I really am. <laughs> All right. I still think it's the work of a crank. But if it'll make you feel better, I'll take that letter to Bill Sloan first thing in the morning. No, take it now, tonight. Please, Mark. Take it to them now. Well, what do you think, Bill? Hmm. Cream-laid paper, typewritten. Slight defect in one or two of the letters, by the look of it. I'll get the lab men down, the fingerprint boys, and give it the one. No, 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 I didn't mean all that, Bill. I meant, uh, what's your opinion about it? Excuse me a minute, will you? Sloan speaking. Get me through to CD division and make it sharp. CD? That uh, covers Chelsea, doesn't it? That's right. Hello, CD. This is Detective Inspector Sloan of the Yard. Can you detail a couple of men to keep a special watch on Chief Inspector West's house? That's right, Bell Street. His wife and their two boys are there at the moment. What? Well, I don't know myself, really. It's just by way of a precaution, okay? Right. Thanks. Well, that seems to answer my question, Bill. You think the same as Janet. The vitriol was meant for Roger. I didn't say that now, did I, Mr. Lessing? Oh, now, don't you think it's time you drop the formality, Bill? I mean, we've known each other long enough, surely. Okay. Now, this letter might be a crank job, as you think, Mark. On the other hand, well, there's no harm in being careful, is there? Anyway, you leave it with us and get off home. You could do with some sleep, I'd say. Well, I've sat up slaving over a hot typewriter later than this, and more than once. Still, you're probably right. Well, good night, Bill. Good night. Home, sweet home. What the? No. Oh, no. My books, my collection. Is that a letter? A stamp, no postman. Good God. My prize for Berenice. The pick of my bow figure smashed. If ever I get my hands on a dirty... Hello, Scotland Yard. I want to speak to Detective Inspector Sloan. Yeah, tell him it's Mark Lessing and it's urgent. Well, sir, if he's not in his office, please find him, wherever he is. You see, Bill? Exactly the same. By all the indications, yes. The same kind of paper, typed on the same machine, I'd say, and the identical words. This is only the beginning. I've ordered a technical crew. They should be here at any moment. Oh, it must be a bit of a blow for you, Mark, to walk in and find your books torn up and all your porcelain smashed. Uh, not all of it. Only my best pieces. I knew what they were about, all right. We are taking it a sight more calmly than I would do in your <laughs> shoes. Yes, I am calm, actually. Very calm. All I want to do, quite calmly, is find out who's responsible and simply and calmly break their necks. Well, I'd be happy to lend a hand. Yeah, but that's not the most important thing, is it? What really matters is that this business proves that Janet was right. It's not a case of crank letters. It's something a damn sight bigger. Someone's got Roger and those closest to him marked down as a target. Uh -huh. 
Yes. Ah, oh, Sloan. Good morning, Sir Guy. Come in, come in. Now, this uh, break-in last night at Lessing's flat. What have you to report? Oh, very little, sir. The technical crew couldn't find a thing. No prints anywhere, apart from Lessing's own, that is. Oh, which means we're dealing with a professional. It's got all the earmarks of it. Well, it certainly seems that someone is after Roger West. Uh, any thoughts, Sloan? Well, there's no shortage of characters with reason to get at Roger... I can think of about 270 individuals who'd like nothing better. 200 of them were inside. Yes, yes, quite. Uh, you'll be in charge until uh, West is out and about again. Right, sir. Uh, now, uh, do you think we should uh, tell him about the letter? Well, I think we have to. He's not the kind to go to pieces just because some villain's got it in for him. His chief concern will be Janet and the boys. And as long as we've got them protected... I'll... Yes, yes, of course. Uh, it was a good move of yours to have a watch placed on Bell Street. Well, at that stage, I was only being careful, sir. Good, good. Now, uh, there's another thing. Do you think West might know something that we do not know? Um, how do you mean exactly, sir? Oh, don't bother to play the innocent with me, Sloan. I know perfectly well that West will often start on a case before it really comes under the Yard's jurisdiction. With what he calls his hunches? Quite. It's possible uh, that he may have started on some such investigation and the people concerned may not welcome the idea. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Well, it could be, sir. Well, then you'd better get along to the hospital and find out about it, hadn't you? Cut along, Sloan. There's no point in wasting time. Come in. Morning, Roger. Oh, so it's you. About time, too. Nothing from you since you went off last night to pick up Bertie Downs. Just a minute, Roger. What's mm. all this? Or what? Well, you, up and out of that bed, all dressed and in your right mind. Or are you? I'm discharging myself from here. Discharging? Well, they wanted me here for one night, they said, for observation. Well, they've had their one night. I'm getting out. Are you sure that's a wise thing to do? Well, I'm damn sure I'm not going to lie around in that bed doing nothing. Well, what about your hand? How is it? Oh, it's a lot more comfortable this morning, thanks. The doctor says it should heal up okay, just a matter of time. Well, that's good to hear. Now, telephone Janet. She'll be here any minute to drive him back to Bell Street. Now, did she tell you... Tell me what? Oh, no, she wouldn't, of course. You've got one in a million there, Roger. If it had happened to my Mary, she'd have blurted out to me the first chance she had. What are you talking about? What's happened to Jan? Now, come on, out with it. Roger, have you been working on any case on the quiet? No, I haven't. Now, are you going to tell me what happened? Well, have you got any ideas about who might have his knife into you? Into me? That's what I said. Bill, if you mean what I think you mean... That's right. Yesterday, in Fleet Street. The vitriol? Hmm. For you, not for the girl. Well, you better sit down and tell me the whole story. From the beginning. Let's have it all. Leaving nothing out. Well, this changes the whole thing, Bill. Anything particular spring to mind? Well, give me a chance, will you? Now, let's start with this Bertie Downs business. No lead at all as to who might have done for him. Not a one. We talked to his landlady and the other people living in the house. Yeah. He was out most of the day, had no visitors or callers. Seen later, coming back with a carrier bag. The bottle of whiskey? Well, it's a fair supposition. So, who gave him the bottle and the 55 quid? In other words... Who put him up to the vitriol job and then made sure he couldn't do any talking? Well, I've got a man checking on all friends and acquaintances of Downs. Not that he seems to have had many. Ah. Then the letters. They weren't posted, so who slipped the one to me through our letterbox and who left the one in Mark's flat? Those are some good questions. And we'll have to find some good answers. I think I'd better go to the yard. Hmm? Here I am, darling. Oh. oh, hello, Bill. Morning, Jan. Well, are you all set to leave, Roger? I've got the car outside. Uh, sorry, Jan, love. A slight change of plan. Oh, how do you mean? I'm not coming straight back to Bell Street. I, uh, I want to drop in at the yard. At the yard? Mm. Oh, for heaven's sake. Now, look, don't argue. There's a good girl. But it's ridiculous. What about your hand? After what happened? Yes. After what's happened. Jan, Bill's just told me about the letters. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Letters? There was only one. No, Mark got one as well. Mark? Hmm. Last night, Janet, after someone had had a little exercise in vandalism at his flat. Oh, no. I'm afraid so, Jan. And for a start, all this keeping things quiet from each other. You don't tell me, Mark doesn't tell you. Now, it's got to stop, understand? Yes, yes, of course, darling. The only reason I didn't say anything I know the reason, you... Jan, and I appreciate it. But unless we cut out this secrecy, we'll get nowhere. Now, I'm going to the yard. Well, I'll come too. I can wait for you in the No, car. no, I'll, I'll go with Bill. Don't know how long I'll be, so you best go on home. Isn't it marvellous? 
Hmm? I come in special to pick him up and he tells me to go home. <laughs> You know the old song, if you want to know the time, ask a policeman. I've got a better version. If you want to be alone, marry a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing, Janet, you sound exactly like my missus. Oh, your Mary and I and every other copper's wife were all sisters under the skin. Well, it's a bit late to complain now, love. I'll see you later. Come on, Bill, let's get weaving. After you, Bill. Thanks. Oh, I must say, it seems a hell of a lot longer than yesterday that I was in this office last. Grab a chair, Bill. Uh, uh, look, I know, uh, not the rickety one. <laughs> now, have you come to any conclusions? Mm. Oh, one or two, perhaps. Such as? Well, if all this is the work of someone I helped to send down, then I'd say we need to look among the ones who've had a long spell behind bars and have come out more or less recently. Yes, that's logical. I can't see any small time, Bill, in going to these lengths. Exactly. So it's a hunt through the files, then? That's right. Or, Bill. Yeah? Make a special note of any of the cases concerned that Mark Lessing lent a hand with. Hey, now that never occurred to me. I took it that Lessing got the treatment just because everyone knows he's a very good friend of yours. Yeah, maybe so. But I don't think we should rule out the other possibility. West? Now, what the dickens... Oh, good morning, Sir Guy. May I ask what you're doing here, Chief Inspector? I beg your pardon, sir. Sloan, I understood you'd gone to the hospital merely to talk to him. Not to bring him back to the yard. Well, sir, I... Oh, it's got nothing to do with Bill, sir. I'm back on duty, that's all. I make a decision as to who's on duty and who isn't, Chief Inspector. Uh, and you've no business here at the moment. You're on sick leave. I am. As of now. Until that hand of yours is in full working order again. But, Sir Guy... Uh... You're not proposing to argue with me, I trust. Uh... Forget this business for the time being. Sloan here can look after it. And I suggest uh, you go somewhere out of London. Uh, take Janet and the boys. Well, I don't see how I can, Jim. There's the school. Oh, to... a short time away won't hurt them. There are a couple of bright lads. I recommend Bournemouth. That's where I usually go. <laughs> and if this weather keeps up, I can give you a hotel uh, close to the beach. You will have no trouble about accommodation. Just uh, mention my name. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you, Sir Guy. Right. All settled then. So, get out from behind that desk and get on with it. Young and old come forth to play on a sunshine holiday. Milton, if my memory serves me rightly. Uh, Roger West speaking. Uh, Mark here, Roger. Well, hello, Mark. Good to hear you. Oh, well, how's Bournemouth and all the happy holidaymakers? Oh, <laughs> just fine. Dad, come uh, on. We're all ready. Mama, me, I'm fish. Scoopy, I... can't you see I'm on the phone? Oh. And the boys enjoying themselves, I gather. Oh, having a whale of a time, Mark. On the beach every day. Hey, Scoop, is he coming? We're waiting. He's on the phone, can't you see? Oh, I thought this was supposed to be a holiday. Now, that's enough out of you two. Off you go. I'll be down when I've finished. That mm. means about another half hour, I bet. And shut the door. Shut the door, <laughs> uh, Sorry about all that, Mark. That's the joys of fatherhood, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Roger, how's your hand doing? Ah, coming along nicely. I can actually eat with a knife and fork now. Oh, that's great. Uh, Mark, um, any news from the yard? I've, I've tried to phone Bill Sloan, but I keep missing him. Uh, well, you just can't get the job a rest, can you? Um, I saw Bill yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, well, what did he say? Uh, what's been happening? Well, he didn't say very much, but oh. um, he did drop one thing. Oh? About the late, unlamented Bertie Down. And uh, what was that? Well, it seems the night before he did his vitriol-throwing act, he was seen in a pub with a character called, um... Uh, Marino. Ben, uh, Marino. Ben Marino. Huh. Oh, the name doesn't ring any bells with me. Uh, nor with Bill, apparently. He said he was going to check on him with the divisional boys. Mm. Uh, well, I'd better not keep you any longer, Roger. Or you'll have two mutinous sons on your hands. Uh, <laughs> give Janet my love. Yes, will do. Bye, Mark. We've only had two cloudy days since we've been here. Mm. And all the rest of the time, it's been sun and blue, blue skies. Oh, this is good to last. Bound to change. <laughs> you just keep saying that, darling. You said it every day, and I'm sure that's why it's kept going mm. by. <laughs> Roger, look. What? Did you see? Walking along the beach, that young woman with a dog. 
I've never seen such a huge animal. What, what is it? Mastiff, by the look of it. No, bigger than most of them, though. Where are the boys? Oh, they were in the water a while ago. But I can't, I can't see them no, now. No, no, Jan. Look, don't start worrying. No, but you know how Richard is about dogs, especially big dogs. Oh, there they are. Martin! Richard! Come here! Such a dog! Look, it's going for them. Oh, come on, Jan. Richard! Right. Right. Look, keep away from the dog. Just leave it all to me. Right. It's all right, Richard. Get out of the way, Scooby. Right. Get away, you brute. Go on. Get, get away. Go on. Get away. Get away. Uh, Roger, is he all right? Richard, my dog. No, no, he's not hurt, Jan. The dog just knocked him down. Now, come on, fish me, old lad. Come on. Up you get. Come on. Mom, it's all right. I thought it was going to bite. And I couldn't go. I just couldn't. It's all right, darling. It's all right. All right, now. Roger, he's shivering. Get your sweater out of the beach. Yes, okay. It's all right. I'll come with you, Dad. Yes, all right. Um, I, I was scared, too, Dad. Hey, he was a hell of a big dog, wasn't he? Yes, he was, and don't say hell. Well, you do. I've heard you. Yes, well, here we are. Uh, where's Fisher's sweater? Uh, oh, there it is. I'll get it. Hey, Dad, hmm? there's a letter for you here. What? On the bench. It says, Chief Inspector and Mrs. Roger Wilson. Yes, all right, son. You take the sweater to your mother. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay, Dad. Hope old Fisher's got out of the shop by now. Bless her. Oh, what the hell? Of all the low, down, rotten. Well, that does it. That really does it. Well, Jan, all set, ready to go? Yes. Now, do I get an explanation? I've told you we're going back to London. Roger, you tell me to bring the boys back here to the hotel, leave me to do all the packing while you disappear somewhere. All right. Uh... All right, Jan. Maybe it's best you should know. That young woman and the dog, it didn't just happen by chance. What? There was another letter. I found it in the beach hut. Brief and to the point. Small boys are easy game, aren't they? Roger. Hmm. I've been to the local coppers. When that woman whistled off the dog, I saw them get into a car. There was a man driving. I've given a description of her, the dog, and the car. I've also called Bill Sloan at the yard. I wish I never thought. I... It never entered my mind that it... I'll get them, Jan, whoever they are. Every last mother, son, and daughter of them. I'll get them. I promise you that. I don't like vendettas, Roger, of any kind, at least of all on the part of a police officer. I don't play mafia games, Sir Guy. I think you know that. But when anyone starts on me and my well, family... Well, 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 yes, yes, that's a different thing, I grant you. And under the circumstances, I can't really say that I blame you. Well, thank you, sir. Um, any progress while I've been away? Um, what about the letters? Have you been able to track down the paper they're using? I'm afraid not, Roger. Uh, it's a kind that's sold all over the country, apparently. And how about the typewriter they were written on? It's a portable, we know that. Would you care to try and guess how many of those there are in London alone? Mm. What about this man, Ben Marino? Ah, yes. Uh, the one who was seen with Downs the night before the vitriol attack on Yes. Him. Sloan's checked up on him, nothing known. No form? No police record of any kind. But um, he is known to be an associate of criminals. Uh, some kind of leg man for them, it seems. Used as a go-between, messenger boy, um, general made of all work. Now we pulled him in. Sloan did suggest it. I decided it might be simpler to keep an eye on him for a while. I see. Well, it's obvious he didn't dream up this business. Watching him may lead us to the person or persons who did. Yes, I agree, sir. Chatworth? Uh, yes. Yes, he is. Uh, very well, I'll tell him. That was Sloan. He says he has something for you. He's in his office. All right, sir. I'll get down there. Uh, if that's okay with you, sir. Certainly. Certainly. By all means. Come in. Oh, Roger. Hello, Bill. The AC said you had something for me. Right here. Well, well. His name's Snicker. All right, Snicker. This is a friend. 
Now, you asked me to look out a dog from the training school for you, Roger. They assure me this is just the one you want. Well, that was quick work, Bill. Tame as a white mouse when he's sure you're friends. Yeah. But, but don't let him loose on anyone you don't like. <laughs> Say hello to your new boss, Nicker. Well, now, you're a fine-looking fellow, aren't you? Huh? He's been trained to the minute. <laughs> if he hears someone in the garden or in the house, he'll bring down the roof. And uh, he's used to children. Well, his last job was with the Ward family, the kidnapping scare, remember? Oh, yes. Well, that's when they discovered he puts kids first, adults afterwards. Just what I wanted. Well, I'd better get him home. And take this with you as well, Roger. And what is it? His pedigree? Well, you think he needs one? <laughs> no, this is a list. I've been through the files, and these are all the long-term villains you've put away. Oh. I've marked the ones who are out, and the cases Mark Lesson was involved in. Oh, fine. I'll look it over. Well, I'll get off now. Come on, Snicker. Let's get you to Bell Street and introduce you to your new household. Roger, an Alsatian. Best guard dogs in the world, Jan. Mm, but he looks so fierce. I, I don't know how the boys will take it. Richard especially. Well, now's the time to find out. We can't have him terrified of dogs for the rest of his life. Uh, uh, where are they? Uh, in the living room. I'll call them out then. Yeah. All right, sit, Snicker. Martin. Ah, that's a good boy. Richard, come here a minute, please. Okay. Yes, Mum, what you... Gosh. Scoop. Scoop, it's a dog. No, it's all right, Richard. It's our dog. Now, look, there's nothing to worry about. He's called Snicker. And friends, Snicker. Now, come on, say hello to him. You first, Scoopy. Just hold out your hand and let him sniff at it. Well, okay, Dad. Oh. You say so. <laughs> there you are, see? Now, come on, Fish, your turn. No. No, I don't want to. He's all right, Fish. Look, he's wagging his tail. <laughs> there's nothing to be frightened of, Richard. He likes boys, don't you, Snicker? Oh. Mm. Now, it's all right, son. It's all right. He doesn't want to be friendly. Come and hold your hand out to him, like Scoopy did. Are you sure he won't Just do as I say. Now, give me your hand. That's it. Now then. Dad. Hey. Hey, look. He's licking my hand. Hey, Scoop, look. Of course. You can stroke him, too. Look like this. See? He likes it. He's laughing. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Can we take him out in the garden, Dad? Yes, of course you can. Come on, Snicker. This way. Uh. We're going into the garden, Snicker. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. For a moment, I was afraid. Well, that's one worry over, Jan, love. <laughs> oh, just listen to them. Happy as Larry. <laughs> well, now, who's that? I'll go. Right. Oh, Christmas. Package for Mr. West. Thank you. It's for you, Roger. Looks like a small box. Oh, I see. Oh, what on earth... Good God. What is it? It's a bullet. A what? A single bullet, Jan. There's a note. What? What does it say? It says, there's another one like this. Waiting for you. Oh, Roger. Listening to Patrick Allen and Sarah Lawson in the second part of Inspector West at Bay by John Creasy. Listen to Encounter with an Eve, the next episode of John Browell's production of Inspector West at Bay. Stand by for West. A crime file based on John Creasy's novel, Inspector West at Bay, dramatized for radio by Maurice Travers. Inspector West at Bay, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard, and Sarah Lawson as his wife, Janet. Part three, Encounter with an Eve. Mark Lessing speaking? Uh, Mark, it's Roger. We're back home. What, back at Bell Street? Yes. But I thought you and Janet and the boys were having a splashing time. Well, someone decided to throw a spanner in the works. But how? What's well, happened? 
There's too much to tell you over the phone, Mark. Uh, come round, will you? Right, I'm on my way. Uh, let's see, uh, Victoria to Bell Street. I should be there in about 20 minutes. Good. Bye. Janet. Hello, Mark. Come in. Janet, since when have you had a dog? <laughs> Good grief. It's right, Snicker. This is a friend of friends, Snicker. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you told him. Come inside, Mark. Oh, Janet, what is all this? Oh, he's a new addition to the family. Hmm? Oh, you're here, Mark. Good. Now, Snicker, go up to the boys. Go on, boy. Upstairs. Go on. Well, is someone going to tell me what you're doing with an Alsatian in the house and that damn fierce-looking one at that? Well, he's as gentle as a lamb once he knows you're a friend. Mm. We got him from the training school, Mark. A police dog? But why? What, what's been going on? Oh, plenty. Oh, Mark, it was terrible. If you'd been there and seen it, poor little Richard fattened mm. his back in the sand with an enormous beast of a dog. No, 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 Janet. It... Now, start from the beginning. Oh, that's probably Bill Sloan. I left a message for him to ring me. Uh, Jan, take mm. Mark into the living room, will you? I'll yes, be with you in a minute. Yes, okay. Uh, Chelsea, 1492. Sloan here, Roger. Oh, uh, hello, Bill. Uh, get my message. Yes, is everything all right? Oh, well, far from it. What do you mean? Well, I've had another delivery from our friends, whoever they are. Another one of those letters? Yeah, and this time there was something else as well. A bullet. What? You mean someone took a shot at you? No, 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 nothing like that. It came packed in a neat little box, a nice brand new bullet, a thirty-two, all bright and shining. Good God. Well, what was in the letter? Well, shortened to the point, it just said, there's another one like this. Waiting for you. Oh, hell. Typed on the same paper and the same machine, I'd say. I'll send it up to the forensic boys in the morning. Not that they'll find any fingerprints of our previous experience as anything to go by. Roger, what about that list I gave you? Have you been through it yet? No, no, I haven't had a chance, but uh, Mark Blessings here will put our heads together over it after I brought him up to date on the Bournemouth business. Uh, see you in the morning, Bill. I thought the tea might be a good idea. You have a cup, won't you, Mark? Oh. Help yourself to sugar. Thank you. You know, there's one point. It's told us something about these people we're dealing with. Well, two things, in fact. Hmm? Um, such as what? Well, first, they've obviously got a damn good information service. Because they knew you were in Bournemouth. And knew what would frighten Richard most. Hmm. And what's the second thing? Well, it's just this. Whoever's behind this vendetta, campaign of terror, whatever you like to call it, must have plenty of money to spread around. How, how do you work that out? Well, Jan Lovett's sticking out a mile. Look... Look at the number of people involved so far. Mm -hmm. The late Bertie Darns throwing acid at me. Someone to deliver that first letter here to Bell Street and someone to break into Mark's flat. Mm. It wasn't Darns, that's for certain. He was dead by then. So that's at least three different people all being used at roughly the same time. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the episode in Bournemouth. There was the woman with the dog and the man driving the car they shot away in. Mm. Yes, well, all that spells money right enough. Which could help to narrow down the field for us. But how can it, Roger? We don't even know the runners and riders. Oh, we might get an idea or two out of that uh, file on the bureau there, Jan. Um, hand it to me, will you? Yes, of course. Now, what's in the file, Roger? Well, Bill Sloan went through the records. It's a list of some of the villains I'd help to send down. The long-term boys. Uh, move your chair around, Mark. We can go through it together. Yeah, sure. Now well, then, here. Yeah. Uh, quite a list, isn't it? Oh, it goes a long way back, you know. And, uh... What are these, Roger? The names underlined. They're the ones most recently out of prison. Oh. And some of those are also marked with an X. Mm-hmm. Meaning what? Well, they're not drawers on a football coupon. Those are the cases you worked on with me, Mark. Hmm? What are you trying to say? How should you think that are after Mark as well? I think it's a possibility. Oh, good Lord. Do you know, that notion never even crossed my mind. I thought my flat was turned over and I got that letter just because I was a friend of yours. Well, it may be only that, of course. But you wouldn't bet on it, eh? No. Right, then. Let's see now. If we take the ones who are out of jail and where I was involved... It gives us a short list. Mm. And here we are. Stanek, Gawley, Wiseman, Kennedy, Jarvis, and his love. Oh. His love? I seem to remember that name. Wasn't he the milk and water little man who tried to blow up his boss's office? <laughs> yeah, lot? that's the one, Janet. His lot, the homemade bomb artist. Mm. Well, we could scrub him out. I'd say he's not the type for this kind of caper. What's more, unless he's won the pools, he wouldn't have the money. All he ever owned was his weekly payback. Well, on that score, we can cross Jarvis off too, can't we? Yes, I think so. Well, the big money boys out of this lot would be um, Wiseman, Kennedy... And Stanek. Yeah, and Stanek. I suppose Gawley has to be classed as an imponderable... Yes. Which one was he? A doc, Gawley. Big drugs case. Oh, yeah. yeah, the doc part of it was purely self-appointed, Janet. He started life as a chemist assistant in the East End. Finished up with a phony pharmaceutical outfit as a cover for peddling dangerous drugs. Yeah, he got ten years. 
Well, I don't know how he's placed now, where money's concerned. But I wouldn't trust him further than I could see him. And not even then. Yes, he'll definitely have to be looked into. Yes, along with the other three, eh? Oh, Paul Wiseman. Now, there was a smooth character for you, Janet. Company director, very much the gentleman. Charm oozing out of every pore. Yeah, but when we came to arrest him, he tried to put a bullet into one of our men. And he went down for fraudulent conversion, seven years, maximum penalty. He got away with over 200,000 pounds that we knew of. Yeah, so he's got money enough. Mm-hmm. Yes. And next we have Kennedy. Yes, our Jacob. Jacob Kennedy? Well, sure I know that name, too. In court at his trial, he was the one who... Yes, Jan, who had quite a lot to say. Let himself go, in fact. He swore he'd get even with you. That's right, I'd forgotten. Hmm. What was he convicted for? Illegal currency dealings and gold smuggling on a large scale. Mm. Well, there a number of other things, too, that we couldn't prove. And I always suspected he was involved in getting stolen art treasures out of the country. Mm. Yes, quite a lad, Mr. Jacob Kennedy. Oh, Roger, he might be our boy. And he did make some pretty savage threats from the dock. Well, threats from the dock aren't all that unusual, Mark. Well, look, the last one on our list, uh, Rodney Stanek. He made quite a few, too. Now, Stanek had a nice racket going till we broke it up. What kind of racket? A girl's jam. Mm-hmm. Not that you'd have ever connected him with anything so sordid. A member of the best golf clubs, big house in Weybridge, stockbroker belt, holidays in the Bahamas. Now, he didn't like it one little bit when we nabbed him for living off immoral earnings. Mm. So, uh, what's your first step, Roger? Hmm... Well, uh, put a check on all these gentlemen. Find out what they're doing now. Put a watch on any of them that seem likely. Now, that's where you'll come in useful, Mark. Me? Yes. Well, unless you've got any objections. It'll be a pleasure. Well, I wouldn't bank on that, Mark. We're up against someone clever, cold-blooded, and venomous. <laughs> I've been on to the Bournemouth police again. They haven't been able to trace the car, the woman, or the dog. Uh, so they probably weren't locals. Well, it looks like we're in for one of those slow jobs. Yeah. Hard slogging all the way. <laughs> Two minds with but a single thought, everyone. What? Well, I said the same thing myself, I remember, to Mark Lessing over a week ago. We haven't got much farther in seven days, have we? Yeah. Well, we're collecting facts, bit by bit. For what good they are. Take Rodney Stanock. Nothing suspicious since he came out of the nick. Been keeping himself out of trouble. Mm. Or so it seems, anyway. And there's Paul Wiseman, taking himself off to the south of France. Cap Dantibes, no less. Yeah, picking up where he left off. He usually went on holiday this time of year. Mind you. Well? It might be significant that he's left the country just when we're starting to make inquiries. It could be sheer coincidence, Roger. Yeah, it could be, yes. Who else? Oh, yes, Gawley. The doc's gone back to where he started from, the East End, living with some old bag. <sighs> you know... I can't help wondering about Gawley. Mark's keeping an eye on him, isn't he? Well, he was. But he's concentrating on the Jacob Kennedy at this moment. What's doing in that department? Oh, I don't know. I haven't heard from Mark for the last few days. Roger. Yeah? I've been thinking. Well, you want to watch it, Bill. That can be dangerous, you know. Oh, sure. It might even get me promoted to chief inspector. I don't think I'd care for that. Not with you as a horrible example. (laughs) I think we should pull in this geezer, Ben Marino. Oh, we're back to that, are we? All right, maybe I am harping on it, but I think Chapman's idea of just keeping him under surveillance is a mistake. Well, I go along with the guy on that. But, Roger, he's the only lead we've got. And a pretty slim one, Bill. Look, we don't know that Marino put Bertie Downs up to throwing that acid at me. We know they were seen together the night before it happened. Yeah, but that doesn't prove he paid Bertie Downs to do the job or gave him the bottle of scotch with the arsenic in it. Well, let's pick him up and ask him a few questions. We'll damn soon find out. Well, and then what? Look, even if Marino was responsible for the attack on me and for putting pay to Downs, well, he didn't do it off his own bat. Now, Marino's only small fry. And if we watch him, he might lead us to the big fish. Okay, okay, you're the boss. Yeah, but there is one thing. He'll have to be watched like a hog. Now, who's taking care of that? The divisional boys in his district. Oh, fair enough. All the same, it wouldn't do any harm to impress on them that they mustn't let up. I I think I'll drop over and see them later in the day. Yeah. Uh, Chief Inspector West. Uh, Mark here, Roger. Well, 
I was beginning to wonder if something had happened to you. <laughs> yeah, only that my feet are getting flatter by the minute. <laughs> a monk, any news on the Kennedy front? Uh, yes, well, that's why I'm ringing. Oh, good. I thought I'd better report what I found out so far. Yeah? Uh, I'm in a pub called the uh, Four Horsemen. It's uh, across the street from Kennedy's city office. Yes, I know it. I'll see you there in about, uh, say, 30 minutes. Right. Mine will be half a better. <laughs> I'll have it waiting for you. Bye. Bye. Uh, Roger? Here. Yeah. Oh, yes, Mark. Yeah. I can see you for a minute. Yeah, this place fills up pretty early. Yeah. Uh, well, here you are, Roger, your beer. Thanks. Well, I thought we'd better stay here by the window. That way we can keep one eye on uh, Kennedy's office. Yeah, surely. Well, yes, cheers, Mark. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Well, have you had any? Hmm? Good luck, I mean. Oh, well, not the kind you're thinking of. I've garnered quite a bit of information, though. All right, let's hear it. Well, first and foremost, Mr. Jacob Kennedy doesn't appear to be suffering from any shortage of cash. Oh, nothing surprising about that. He must have had plenty tucked away. Hmm. Well, five months ago, that's about a month after he walked out through the prison gates, he bought a flat in um, Deverell Court, you know, off Park Lane, and moved in. With the family? Yeah, the wife and the two sons, yeah. Miss Clara Kennedy. Yes, I remember her. In court, while Jacob was doing his I will repay you act, she was just standing there, looking at him. Never took her eyes off him. Mm. And the sons, Charles and Peter, they weren't there on that day, as I recall. No, no, they weren't. Yes, well, go on, Mark. Well, they've been running the office while Kennedy was inside. It's still known as uh, J.K. Investments. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, crafty boy, Mr. J.K. He'd put everything he could into his sons' names and Clara's. Including the country cottage he owned near Guildford. Yeah, they still have it. Go down for weekends quite often, I gather. How about his day-to-day -day activities? Well, he's resumed very much his old life, as far as I can see. Mm. He plays a good deal of bridge with uh, much the same people he knew before he was put away. And about the only difference is that a couple of West End clubs he used to belong to have uh, fallen. Mm. Oh, and there is one other difference. He's got a new secretary. Oh. Mm. Uh, name of Eve Wedlake. Been with him for about uh, four months. And a... Uh, very dolly specimen. Uh, oh, no, I don't mean one of your Chelsea birds. I'd put her about, uh, 30. Mm. Uh, and a little bit of a mystery. Oh, what way? Well, I can't seem to find out much about her. Except that she's got a flat in Kensington, um, 17 Worrell Street. Mm. Uh, she works rather irregular hours, sometimes at the office over there, so even at times down at the cottage. You would like. Oh, I'll get Bill Sloan to make a few inquiries, see if he can dig up anything. Oh, fine. Well, I'm trailing her as much as I can at the moment. All right. And talking of trailing, there's a little something else, Roger. Oh? I'm pretty sure I've been trailed myself. What? Yeah. I've spotted him several times now, twice on foot, the other occasions behind the wheel of a car, a grey mini. Any idea who he is? No, not a notion. Description? Chap around 40, thinnish face, always wears a hat, oh, with one of those Tyrolean feather thingies in the hat band. Are you sure he's following you? <laughs> it looks jolly like it. Yeah. Well, do you want me to put a man on his tongue? Oh, no, 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 I don't think so. Not yet, anyway, but I thought you'd better know about it. Yes. Well, keep your eye on him, Mark. And, um, uh, don't get careless, will you? <laughs> Not to worry. Well, strange as they may seem, I've, uh, developed rather an affection for my own skin after all these years. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What is it? The lady I was telling you about across the street just come out of Kennedy's office, see? Well, you couldn't miss her. Mm. So that's Eve Wedleg, is it? Oh, you were right, Mark. She's really something, definitely. And those clothes aren't chain store, more like Bond Street, I'd say. Roger, the woman at Bournemouth, on the beach with the master. You mean, could it have been her? Yes. There was no way of telling, Mark. I only saw the Bournemouth woman at a distance. Yes, I, I'd say they're roughly the same build, both fair and beyond that. She's crossing the road. But Roger, I think she's coming in here. Yeah, oh, that's funny. She's not the pub at lunchtime type from one of them. Uh, well, look, uh, we'd better not be seen together. I'll, I'll take my hand. Well, uh, kale dish. <coughs> uh, well, uh... Oh, hello. You seem a little surprised. Oh, do I? Oh, well, uh, that's life, isn't it? Uh, full of surprises. Uh, may I offer to buy a drink? I'd much prefer you to take me to lunch. You would? You seem rather at a loss for words. <laughs> well, uh... I... I know you've been keeping a watch on me. Hmm? I saw you come in here from my office window. Did you now? 
Well, your boss can't keep you very busy. I thought you and I should have a little talk. Of course, if you'd rather not take me to lunch. Oh, perish the thought. What are we waiting for? Now, where would you care to eat? Somewhere in the city, or would you like to go to the West End, or even possibly out of London altogether? A little place in the country? Not the country. I'm a working girl, remember? <laughs> but I'll leave you to choose. Oh, right you are. Uh, how do you like Italian food? I love it. Then, all we need is a taxi. Hey, there's one. Taxi! Hey, taxi! Thanks. Uh, Armando's driver, Soho, Frith Street. Okay, Gov. Oh, can you get Miss Wedlake? Thank you. Mm. But you've got it wrong, here. What? My name. It's Mrs. Wedlake. Oh. Oh, really? Your detective work has let you down. My husband's dead, actually. A car crash. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Thank you. It was some time ago. I see. I, um, also see you haven't brought the dog. What? Uh, no poodle, borzoi... Not even a mastiff? If you mean, do I own a dog? The answer is I don't. And even if I did, I certainly wouldn't bring him to the office. Mr. Kennedy doesn't like dogs. <laughs> oh, which tells us quite a lot about him, doesn't it? Now, that's what I want to talk to you about. Uh-uh. One should never indulge in anything remotely resembling serious conversation before eating. <laughs> Afterwards, well, that's a different story. Chief Inspector West's office, Detective Inspector Sloan speaking. Uh, Bill, Roger here. Yes, Roger. Uh, just to let you know where I am, in that pub, the Four Horsemen. With Mark Lessing? Uh, no, he's gone off with Kennedy's secretary. What? I'll tell you all about it when I get back to the yard. Uh, meantime, run a check on her, will you? The name is Wedlake, Eve Wedlake, W-E-D-L-A-K-E. -E. Will do. Uh, Roger? Yes? I've been taking another look at that short list, the one you doped out with Mark. Yes? Well, it strikes me there might be a name you've overlooked. Uh, what name? Riker. The Riker brothers. That's right. Mark was on that case with you, wasn't he? Well, yes, he was. But, Bill, the Rikers are still serving their sentence with another, how long? Oh, about eight years to do, isn't it? Well, it wouldn't be the first time villains went on operating from behind prison bars. Yeah. The Riker boys had a good sized organization, don't forget. And they're a vicious pair, specialists oh, yeah. in the rough stuff. That bullet you got through the post, that's got their touch on it to me. Hmm. That could be, I suppose. I, t I tell you what. I'll call in at West End Central on my way back. See if the lads there know anything about the Riker mob still being in business. Uh, bye now. Bye, Roger. Would you like some more coffee? Oh, I couldn't possibly. That was an absolutely perfect lunch. <laughs> well, you must tell that to Amanda. It'll make his day. Uh, what about a cigarette, then? Lovely. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Wedlake. Christian names, I think, don't you? Oh, all right. Eve, what is all this about? Tell me this first. You weren't really all that surprised when I came up to you in the pub, were you? Oh, you'll have to forgive me. I have uh, grown used to surprises. Doesn't that make things rather dull for you? Hmm? Oh, well, it's the penalty of being a bachelor. With middle age peering at me round the corner, just keeping oneself alive with a hobby or two. <laughs> and one's bath chair waiting in the hall? Well, not exactly, though I might even resign myself to that. And quite happily, if I had someone like you to push me around. And to answer my few quavering questions, like the one I asked you just now. You're really very patient, aren't you? But Jacob said you would be. Hmm? And I'm beginning to believe that everything he said about you is true. Oh, come now. I'm sure I can't be as bad as that. Mm, on the contrary. He has a very high opinion of you. Look, are we talking about the same man? The surname Kennedy, Christian name Jacob? Of course. Was this lunch his idea or yours? Well, I... And I'm disappointed. And there was I, putting it all down to my irresistible sex appeal. I've got a good mind to send in the bill for it now. Mark, why are you taking such an interest in him? Why are you watching him? Is that what he wanted you to find out? Yes. Well, if I can. Because he thinks you might be able to help him. Help? Me? Help Jacob Kennedy? Yes. If you think he bears you or Chief Inspector West any malice, you're quite wrong. <laughs> I am, am I? He's a gambler. 
He may not have any great regard for the law. Yeah, putting it mildly. But he'll make sure he never does anything outside the law again. Hmm? He took a gamble, and he lost. He admits that. What he said about Roger West and about you from the dock, well, that was all very foolish, and it's all forgotten oh, now. Oh, I see. He's paid his debt to society. He's learned his lesson. He's a reformed character. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I am. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Lo and behold, it has come to pass that the age of miracles is not yet gone from the earth. Mark, it's useless. You have to take that attitude. Eve, I don't know much about you. But if you'll take my advice, you'll give up your job. Find someone else to work for. To put it this way, and it must qualify as the understatement of the year, Jacob Kennedy is not a nice man. You're wrong. You're quite wrong. I've worked for him for four months. I found him to be kind and thoughtful and generous. His wife and his two sons are the same, the whole family. Well, well, so our Jacob's been misunderstood all these years. Well, I have to pass that on to Roger. He hasn't had many good laughs lately. Wasn't he hurt or something? Or something. Mark, what's the matter? I'll tell you what's the matter. Someone's having a cut at Roger and at me. They tried to disfigure him using acid. Oh, God. And there have been one or two other nice little tricks play, like at uh, Bournemouth, for instance. Well, what happened there? <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, are you saying that you think Jacob Kennedy had something to do with it? Look, I wouldn't know. But well, it's not true. Hmm? And it's a rotten suggestion to make. It was a rotten thing to do. Well, whoever's behind this, it's not Jacob. Mark, listen. He's in trouble himself. He's being blackmailed. He's been getting letters. Letters? Yes, threatening letters. And now he's beginning to think that his life might be in danger. He won't go to the police because of what happened in the past. But he needs help. Help? His wife and I finally persuaded him. He still won't appeal to the police. He thinks they wouldn't take him seriously or, or wouldn't care what happened to him. But he agreed to let me talk to you about it. I see. He doesn't really think you'd lift a finger to help him. He says he'll get no more sympathy from you than he would from the police. Well, he's right there. And that he'll only say he asked for everything he's getting. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe it. So which of us is right, Mark? Are you going to say what Jacob thinks he'll say? Or what I believe? Well, what's your answer? And what was your answer, Mark? <sighs> I didn't give one, Janet. But you must have said something. Well, I didn't commit myself. I, um, equivocated, as my old tutor Cambridge used to say. Why? Did you think she was lying? Well, I don't know. I tested her out once or twice. I tossed the Bournemouth business at her. I mentioned the master, mm -hmm. but by her reaction, I'd swear she knew nothing about any of it. Oh, but then, of course, women can be very good at concealing the truth. Oh, pooh. Hmm? So you avoided giving her a definite answer? That's right. Hmm. Um... What's she like, this uh, Eve Wedlake? Hmm? Well, she's beautiful, fair, high-spirited. Mm -hmm. And she's obviously intelligent. And I'd say she's also loyal, warm-hearted, uh, and sincere, mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> and all you've done is to have lunch with her for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. West. If you're going to sit there with that ridiculous, smug, feminine look on your face, I... <laughs> not at all. It was time I was doing something about dinner. I'm not sure when Roger will get home. He rang to say he was going down to one of the divisions, but I shouldn't think it'd be long. You'll stay for dinner, won't you? Oh, no, not tonight. Oh. Thank you, Janet. I'm still full of food. It was an enormous lunch. Oh, you sure? Yeah, quite sure. I'll go home to the flat. I'll put some music on the record. Oh, I've seen the Zeffirelli. So I think Tchaikovsky. And in the fullness of time, I'll take myself to bed... Uh, and I'll see myself out. <laughs> no, no, no. Janet, don't know it, don't go. All right. Bye. Bye. Ah. Now, let's see. Now, uh, where is it? Ah, yes. What do you want? Put that gun down. Don't be a fool. Oh! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, God! The pain! Oh, my eyes! Nine. Two. Oh, God! Oh, 
smart cop. Uh, Chelsea, one four nine two. Roger. Uh, who's that? Mark. The flat. And hurry. Mark. Ah. Mark. Mark, answer me. You've been listening to Patrick Allen and Sarah Lawson in the third part of Inspector West at Bay by John Creasy. Listen to Conflict in Kensington, the next episode of John Brown's production of Inspector West at Bay. Stand by for West. A crime file based on John Creasy's novel, Inspector West at Bay, dramatized for radio by Maurice Travers. Inspector West at Bay, starring Patrick Allen as Chief Inspector Roger West of Scotland Yard, and Sarah Lawson as his wife, Janet. Part four, conflict in Kensington. Mark, hello, hello. Mark, are you there? Mark. What the hell? Jan, Jan. Yes, what is it, Robert? No, there's trouble. Mark, hello, hello. What's wrong? I don't know. Mark, can you hear me? Mark. What's, what's happened? I heard the phone ring. Then I answered it. All Mark said was hurry, and then I heard him groan. I think he's collapsed. Collapsed? I'm getting round there fast. Where's that spare key to his flat that Mark gave us? Um, it should be in the drawer under the telephone. Right. Oh, yes, got it. Right, I'm off. Well, I'm coming with you. All right, come on, then. God knows what's happened to Mark. We've got no time to waste. Well, there's his door, Jan. It's shut. This is when I bought the key. Mark! Mark! In the living room, look. On the floor. Oh, Roger, is he... It's all right. He's breathing. Oh. Mark. Who? Mark Orlan. Oh, Roger. What is it, Mark? Janet. Well, you here too. What happened, Mark? A man. He got in somehow. Mm. Had a gun. He fired it. A spray, a cloud of spray. Got in my eyes. Ammonia spray. The place stinks to high heaven with it. Ammonia? Mm. Well, I bathed my eyes, but I. I must have passed out again with the pain. Come on, let's get you up on your feet. Hmm? There you are. Ah, that's it. Uh, Jan, take him into the bathroom. Bathe his eyes some more thoroughly. Right. Come on, Mark. Ammonia. Well, it still hurts like hell, but... But, Roger, I thought... I know. You thought it was acid, like the dose I got in my hand in Fleet Street. Yes. Hmm. Well, go on, get to the bathroom. I'll call a doctor, then I'll get onto the yard to Bill Sloan. I want him here with a crew. Maybe we'll be luckier this time. Maybe we can really find something to go on. Mark? Janet? What's going on? How are you feeling? Oh, never mind that. Have they, uh, have they found anything? Well, don't you worry about that. You just relax like the doctor told you. Oh, I'll be all right. You know, these characters have never let up, have they? Right from the day the acid was thrown at Roger and my mm. flat vandalized... The mast of at Bournemouth, pouncing on young Richard, scaring the wits out of all of you. And now this. And all the time, the anonymous notes with their merry little messages. Yes, it's a war of nerves, Janet. And obviously mine aren't standing up to it very well. Oh, now you're talking rubbish. Well, am I? I don't see Roger cracking up under the strain. Somehow I just can't imagine him fainting all over the floor. Hey, Mark Lessing, you amaze me. Well, why? You ought to know him better than that. For goodness sake, you've known him longer than I have since before we married. Oh, what of it? Roger Fiegel sings just as much as anybody else, if not more. He's just trained himself not to let it show, if he can help it. That's all. Now, how is he, Jan? Well, he's back to his old form, talking nonsense. Oh, fine. <laughs> then we can change the subject. Uh, come on in, Bill. Okay. What, your technical boy's still here? They left a few minutes ago. Any joy? That'll be the day. 
Know something? It's times like these that I wish I'd never got promoted to Detective Inspector. You found nothing, then? No, except for this. What is it? Another one of those letters? Mm-hmm. Addressed to you, Mark. What? What's it say? Short and sweet again. You meddle too much, don't. Just like the others. No fingerprints, nothing to help identify the ruddy thing. Yeah, but the same kind of paper. And done by the same typewriter. There's no doubt of it. Identical defects in the same two letters. Look at the, the tail on the E is hardly visible and only a faint impress made by the crossbar. And of the where G. did you find the letter? On that uh, console table of yours. Now, Mark, how good a look did you get at him, the chap who shot the ammonia at you? Well, it all happens a damn fast. I'll move. bet it did. Well, wait a minute. I've just thought of something. Now, what, Jan? How did he get into the flat? I mean, if he picked the lock, then doesn't that prove... Right it? on the button, Janet. Obviously, it was the same geezer who got him before. Our chum is getting quite used to it, isn't he? Mark, was he the man you told me about this afternoon? The one you think's been following you? What's this? Someone tailing you, Mark? Oh, yes, but uh, this one wasn't a boy. That I'm sure of. No, my shadow lad always wears a hat. Well, you said with a Tyrolean gadget in the hat. Though. Yeah, that's right. And what's more, he's older and thinner. Then what was this bloke like? Well, he seemed to be broader built, uh sort of stocky. And I have an idea his hair was sandy colored. Mm. Roger, I'm just wondering. Yum. It strikes me that as Mark's been keeping tabs on a couple of names on our list of possibles, uh, Doc Gawley to start with, and now he's watching our pal Jacob Kennedy. Yes, I think I see what you're getting at. Oh, well, I don't. So perhaps Bill can explain it to me. Well, it's just this, Janet. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mark's been getting warm, getting too close for somebody's comfort. Mm, Bill could be right at that, Roger. Yes, he could be. Well, what now? Well, first, we have to get Mark back to our place. Well, Bell Street? But why? Because we've got a spare room, as you know very well. Besides, Jan can look after you more easily. Then. <laughs> look, I don't need looking after. I'm perfectly <laughs> Quiet, right. Mark. You heard the man. Think you can get down to the car all right? Of course I can get down to the car. Look, there's no need for all this, Roger. That's settled, then. Jan, love, you take the car and get him home, will you? All right. But aren't you coming, too? No, Bill and I are going to pay a visit. We are? Who to? Mr. Jacob Kennedy's secretary, the widowed Mrs. Wedleg. Eve? What do you want with her? A couple of things about her interest me. Such as what, for instance? Well, such as the fact that she asked you to take her to lunch today, for instance, and what she said about Kennedy. What was that, Roger? Well, I'll tell you on our way, Bill. But here's what interests me most of all, Mark. Yes? The day you first talk to her, this sandy-haired character turns up and shoots ammonia at you. What do you think? I don't think anything yet. I just like a word with the lady, that's all. All right, Bill, come on. Let's get down to your car and get weaving. Now, Roger, you were going to tell me about Kennedy. Oh, yes. Well, according to what Eve Wedlake told Mark, he's a reformed character. Is that so? Yeah, ever since he came out of jail six months ago. All those threats he made from the dock against me and against Mark, well, that's all forgotten. It is, eh? Furthermore, he's in trouble. Some form of blackmail. Apparently, he's been receiving menacing letters. Letters? Sure. Well, that's a turn-up. Yeah. He's afraid his life may be in danger. Our lives, too, by the way this fellow's driving. Constable, watch it, will you? Sorry, sir. Roger, what's your reaction to all this about Kennedy? Well, I'm keeping an open mind. Yes. Well, of course, he's only one of the names on our list. Exactly. And if we're right that it's someone with a grudge against me, someone who's come out of prison recently, then we've got other candidates. Paul Wiseman, Rodney Stanek, and we mustn't forget Doc Gawley. What about the Riker brothers, that idea of mine? Oh, yes, I had a chat about that with the superintendent at West End Central. What did he think? Well, he's inclined to agree with you, Bill. Said we shouldn't rule out the Riker boys in a hurry, even though we've got them behind bars. Now, he says their organization isn't dead and buried yet, not by any means. So they're also a possibility. Yeah. Oh, that's just that trouble with this case. Too damn many possibilities. I just want to get my hands on whoever put Bertie Downs up to throwing that acid at me and then had him murdered. But we know that. It was Ben Marino. And I still say we should pick him up. Now, we think it's Marino. But even if it is, I want whoever's behind him. Here's Wardle Street now, Chief Inspector. Right. Oh, don't pull up dead in front of number 17. Stop a couple of houses further down. Right, you are, sir. Don't worry, Bill. Only one flight up. Thanks. First floor flat in the best part of Kensington. Yes, it must make quite a dent in a secretary's salary, wouldn't you say? I would if you'd give me a chance. You took the words right out of my mouth. Well, that'll be her door, I suppose. Roger. Well, well. Someone seems to have left a note for Mrs. Wedleg. Typed on an envelope and pinned to the door. Mm. Don't see too much of Mark Blessing. 
Well, now. Well, you notice the typing? Like all the others. So is the envelope. Hmm. Grows more interesting by the minute, this business. Today she and Mark have lunch together. Now each of them gets a warning. Well, she can't be home or this wouldn't still be on the door. Hmm. Go to the top of the class, Mr. Sloan. We'll make a detective out of you yet. Funny <laughs> joker. Bill, shut up. What is it? Thought I heard something inside the flat. Someone moving around. Well, so what? She probably shares the place. No, not according to Mark. He's been watching her. She lived here alone, he says. Well, maybe it's a friend waiting for her. Boyfriend, like as not, if she's as dishy as I hear tell. Shh, shh. Listen. What the blazes? That's down in the street. Damn car backfiring? By hell. Here, that sounds like a pilot. And not by accident. Come on, Bill. That wasn't backfiring. Those were gunshots. Over there, Bill, across the street. Oh, it's hard to see anything for that crowd. Isn't yes. it marvelous how people whip up out of nowhere the minute there's any excitement? Looks like a car went into that lamppost. Oh, there's our constable. A constable over here. Right, sir. Yes, yes Detective Inspector. Well, what happened here? Did you see? Well, sir. Oh, we can go into that later. Let's take a look at the car first, see if anyone's been hurt. All right, let us through here, please. Let us through. A constable, move everyone back, will you? All right, now. Everybody back, please. Come along, please. Yeah, all right. All move away. Everybody move back. Right, now we can see. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. One headlight smashed and the radiator buckled. Bill, look who's behind the wheel. It's her. Eve Wedleg. With Mr. Jacob Kennedy in person right beside her. Unconscious by the look of it. Well, she seems okay, though. And Mrs. Wedleg? Mrs. Wedleg, are you all right? Oh, yes, I, I, I think so. Who are you? Uh, Roger West, Chief Inspector Scotland Yard. Uh, this is Detective Inspector Sloan. Uh, you sure you're not hurt? Oh, yes. Just a little dazed, that's all. All right, then let's get you out. Yeah, take my arm. No, I, I can manage. Oh, there. You see? But Jacob, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, take a look at him, Bill. Sure thing. When I ran into the lamppost, his head hit the windscreen. How is he, Bill? Well, it doesn't seem to be anything serious. No sign of blood. But we'd better not move him. No, no, not before a doctor's had a look at him. Well, there's a doctor's house at the end of the street. I, I think he's number 34 or, or maybe 36. I'll see about it, will you, Bill? Right. I'll send the constable down for him. Now, Mrs. Wedlake, do you feel up to telling me what happened? There were shots, four of them. Yes. I'm rather confused about it all. I'd just turned into the street when this car suddenly roared up from behind me. Then there were the shots. From this other car? Yes. I got such a shock, I lost control of the wheel and ran into the lamppost. Thank heavens I wasn't doing any speed to speak of. I'd already started to slow down. Yes, I was lucky for you. Then there was another car as well. Another one? I saw it out of the corner of my eye, just as I swerved into the lamppost. I'm not sure, but it seemed as if it went off chasing after the car that the shots came from. I see. Well, I think we'd better get you to your flat, sir. Come along, Mrs. Wedlake. We'll take it nice and easy, shall we? Here we are, then. Now, if you'd like to give me your key, I'll open the door for you. There's no need. I, I'm perfectly all right. Uh... There's something wrong? Oh, no. Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, well, someone seems to have left you a note. Yes, I've just read it. Uh, may I? Don't see too much of Mark Lessing. No signature. Now, what do you make of that, Mrs. Wedlake? I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> it sounds like a jealous boyfriend, but a bit premature, surely, considering you've only seen Mark once for lunch today. Yes. Mr. West. Quiet, not a word. Give me your key. You think there's someone... I'm going in. You stay here. All right, Mrs. Wedlake, uh, open the door and we'll go in, shall we? And that's the idea. Who's that? Look out, the gun! Drop it. I said drop the gun. You... Are you all right? Uh, yes, thanks. You knocked him out. Well, he must have a weak chin. Mrs. Wedlake, have you ever seen this man before? No, never. Neither have I, but I know who he is. Stocky build, sandy hair. Just as well he didn't get a chance to pull that trigger. Apart from anything else, you'd have had a job getting the smell of ammonia out of your flat. Ammonia? Mm, that's a water pistol loaded with it. Well, this lad's had a busy night. First it was Mark Lessing, and now... Mark? That's right. Mrs. Wedlake, 
Would you mind going down and telling Detective Inspector Sloan I'd like him to come up here, please, and uh, bring the constable with him? Right. I want this chap lodged nice and safely in a cell. He's got quite a few questions to answer. Get him down to the car, Constable. I'll be with you in a minute. We'll take him to Cannon Row. All right, sir. Come on, you. Well, that was a nice piece of work, Roger. Nailing that geezer. Throw everything at him, Bill. Assault on bodily harm on Mark Lessing. Attempted assault on Mrs. Wedlake. Assault on a police officer. That should make him talk. I want to know who put him up to all this. Leave it to me. Uh, where's Mrs. Wedlake at the moment? Down in the street, talking to the doctor about Kennedy. Yeah. He's okay, I gather. Okay. Just passed out for a bit with a shock and the bump on the windscreen. Oh, she'll be bringing him up here, I imagine. I'll wait and have a few words with him. Right, I'll go off then. Yes, fine. Uh, just a minute, Bill. Yeah? Something I've just noticed. What? A desk. More particularly, the typewriter on it. I think we might try a little experiment. Now, all we need is a sheet of paper. Roger, if you're thinking what I think you're Let's thinking... Let's just see before anyone turns up, shall we? Mm. Huh. Yeah, that should do. Take a look, Bill. Especially at the letters E and T. Well, I'm damned. Uh, if that's not one for the book, then I don't know what is. Now, how the devil did you know? I didn't. It was just an experiment, as I said. So she wrote them, all those anonymous notes. I don't know that we can go as far as that, but they're certainly written on this machine, no question about that. Are you going to tackle her about it? I'm not sure. I'll play it by ear, I think, see what develops. Well, you better get going now, Bill. Put our sandy-haired friend through the hoops. I'll sit here tight till Mrs. Wedlake and Kennedy arrive. Then maybe we'll find out a bit more.